Darwin couldn't actually see natural selection acting in real time. But today, scientists can, by observing the evolution of HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. Jeff Gustafson has been infected with HIV for over a decade. He takes a host of medications, but to little avail. The virus keeps adapting, evolving into new strains that evade the drugs. There's a pervasive feeling that all you have to do is take your medicine and you'll be okay, and that really isn't the case. You know, HIV has the capacity to evolve no matter what you give it. There are 19 HIV drugs on the market today, and of those 19, I've already been through 14 of them. Clarence Johnson, too, is locked in a daily struggle against the rapidly evolving virus. Clarence Johnson's doctor, Michael Sag, has seen HIV evolve into new varieties over the last dozen years. The virus is constantly changing subject to the forces of natural selection in the environment of a patient's body. Imagine we didn't have the concept of evolution, and we started giving drugs to patients that in the test tube look great, and all of a sudden, the virus starts coming back, and it's not susceptible to the drugs anymore. What a mystery. How in the world did that happen? There's only one way that it happened, through evolution. Once inside a patient's white blood cells, HIV replicates at an alarming rate. Billions of new viruses are spawned every day. And each time it reproduces, random genetic copying mistakes, mutations, result in slightly different varieties of the virus bursting forth into the bloodstream. Some of these new varieties, just by chance, will have traits that make them resistant to certain drugs. So when drugs enter the bloodstream, natural selection favors the drug-resistant forms. They survive and reproduce. Before long, drug-resistant viruses dominate in the patient's body. Evolution seems pretty easy to understand when we look at big animals. We can kind of see it in a sense, but that's evolution that took centuries to develop. When you're talking about something like a virus that you can't see, in everyday life, it's hard to imagine how it changes. In the case of HIV, we're talking about minutes to hours to move from one species to another. It's mind-boggling in terms of the speed with which HIV can replicate. The process of natural selection feeds on randomness. It feeds on accident and contingency, and it gradually improves the fit between whatever organisms there are and the environment in which they're being selected. But there's no predictability about what particular accidents are going to be exploited in this process. For millions of HIV patients, evolution is the enemy. If only there were a way to take advantage of natural selection, to make it work in a patient's favor. In 1997, at Goethe University in Frankfurt, Germany, a researcher may have discovered such a way, quite accidentally. We had a patient, and even though he was being treated with five drugs, his virus replication could not be controlled. And at the same time, he was suffering from a lot of side effects of the medications. Um, so at that point, he asked his physician if it wouldn't make sense to just stop taking the drugs for a while, since he was really having nothing much from them other than the toxicities he was experiencing. After three months off drugs, the patient's virus population was tested for drug resistance. Dr. Miller could not believe the results. At first I thought a mistake had happened because um, the lab that, that did the resistance test uh, was not able to detect any resistance whatsoever in this virus population. We sent a second sample and this result was confirmed. Within a matter of three months, his virus population had changed completely from being resistant to every single drug to appearing to be susceptible to every single drug that we currently have. 
here's what had happened. With drugs present in the patient's bloodstream, only the drug-resistant strains of the virus could replicate. But some of the non-resistant virus, the wild type, still lingered in the white blood cells. When the patients stopped taking drugs, the environment changed and the wild type came back. It replicated extremely rapidly and soon outnumbered the drug-resistant strains. In Darwinian terms, the wild type virus was more fit in this drug-free environment. Dr. Miller's findings have led to a new experimental treatment strategy. Take a patient off drugs for a time. And if the virus reverts to the non-resistant wild type, hit it hard with a combination of drugs. Clarence. So the concept of a treatment interruption is a new strategy that we might be able to apply in Clarence's case, but we've just got to make sure that we aren't putting him at too much risk if we choose that route. So one of the options is to take all the drugs away for a while, let the virus spring back into its natural state of not having any mutations, and then pounce on it again with the regimen. And it might even be the same regimen that we used before. On first blush, the evolution back to wild type would seem to be a great thing. The drugs all of a sudden can work again, but it's a double-edged sword. As the virus goes back to wild type, it becomes more dangerous for the host. It's a much more effective killer of cells. And so we have to find a way to balance those two things out.